driven by extractive industries such as forestry, mining, oil, and gas, has been wreaking havoc on the social and ecological systems across the country and throughout its history. The path of destruction has been met with strong resistance from communities and movements. Their efforts have led to delay, delaying, altering, and halting projects, as well as to legislative victories, new legal precedents, evolving relationships between settlers and indigenous peoples in Canada, and innovating of transformative strategies. These resistance efforts have been led largely by indigenous people, sometimes with support from allies and environmental justice groups. People have set up temporary blockades and long-term protest, camp, uh, protest camps, launched international boycotts, manually shut down pipelines, taken industry to court, hit the streets en masse to draw attention to the injustice and amplify the voices and demands of those resisting. So that's the opening, um, the opening paragraph. And in it, we share an analysis we did of 52 cases of environmental conflict in Canada. And we did an analysis that was both qualitative and quantitative by uh, husband Nico. We both have Argentinian husbands, Nico. <laughs> mine, mine ran the stats uh, on this analysis. And what we found uh, was that there are particular strategies, a combination of strategies that are really strongly associated with transformative or really positive outcomes. Like, for example, stopping pipelines, for example, like massive court wins, this kind of thing. And um, I'm not sure if I should tell it to you all. I will. Uh, <laughs> the first strategy that is associated with really transformative outcomes, physical disruption of resource flows. So occupations and blockades, number one. Number two, boycotts and other financial pressure really has led to important wins. Strategy three, in, uh, enacting indigenous sovereignty law and governance. So indigenous peoples enacting their sovereignty has had powerful, powerful uh, outcomes for environmental and uh, social justice. Strategy four, having really strong media campaigns. So winning the battle of big ideas, having very strong media communications, uh, sort of making really powerful, uh, so yeah, strategy in that way. Number five, transformative alliances. So movements or struggles that had a lot of different actors from you know legal support uh indigenous folks leading the way environmental groups as allies uh you know just many different kinds of people working together was associated with things and so was multi front strategies for example, <coughs> communities that were blockading and and fighting in court and uh, engaged in very strong media campaigns this kind of things when work together they obviously uh, had but one thing that we make really clear in the chapter is that okay, so at the end of the chapter here. In looking at the cases on the Canada map of the EJ Atlas, we see that indigenous communities are doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to resisting injustice and unsustainability and working to transform conditions and structures in this country. So this is something that we saw again and again. So indigenous communities are having huge uh, successes, but at huge costs. So these folks are up against uh, criminalization, police violence, huge legal costs, um, lives disrupted, lands disrupted, and they're, they're bearing the brunt of uh, fighting, for, uh, fighting for livable ecosystems and human rights in this country, indigenous rights. So we end by, um, really calling on <clears throat> researchers, academics, activists to show up if you want to transform this country, if you want to secure a livable future, yet put your resources and your time, your skills, your efforts between, behind indigenous communities uh, wherever they're fighting, because uh, that's what's gonna tip the scale and power in this country and, and get us where we need to go. Uh, and so it was not long after finishing this kind of uh, analysis that I was finishing my PhD trying to decide what to do with my my time. I decided to to, to leave academia. I didn't feel I didn't feel super drawn to that. And so uh, within a couple months after finishing, I, I started research for the front lines, which is an organization that I now work as a research coordinator, as is Marcia, my colleague. And we support research led by amazing people, including uh, Marley Hale and Jonathan Lavier and other folks. So what we do is we sort of support the research uh, needs of communities and movements across Canada who are fighting for environmental and climate justice. With the idea that 
You know, oil and gas companies and the governments, governments that support them have huge budgets for research, huge budgets for PR, but the communities and movements on the ground facing these impacts and leading the resistance don't have huge budgets for PR research. But meanwhile, there are thousands and thousands of researchers and universities across this country who have skills and time to offer. So that's what we do, we coordinate research labor from volunteers across Canada to provide labor as, as research allies. So it's research for the front lines. We have a website, www.researchforthefrontlines.ca. Uh, so if you're out there and you're part of a community who's resisting mining, <coughs> resisting oil and gas, facing climate impacts, uh, facing uh, colonial violence, we uh, can, and you have research needs, we can support that. So feel free to get in touch. And if you're someone with research skills and time to offer and want to donate some of your time, to support these transformative stuff, uh, um, struggles, feel free to get in touch. Uh, we have a sign-up form for research uh, volunteers. And if you're someone who has lots of skills but not a lot of time, you can sign up to be a research mentor. So that's often for us, you have a lot of skills and certain methods, not a lot of time to offer, but we can hit you up and ask you some questions, get advice on certain uh, project designs. So I wanted to share that because it was definitely working with you all and being part of this book and really uh, it really inspired me to, to <laughs> step out of academia and try to do something of use uh, to communities and movements that are leading these struggles and bearing the brunt, uh, carrying a uh, disproportionate uh, weight of these struggles. So thanks for the inspiration, uh, Sonia and Leah. And I would like to now um, turn it over to anyone in the Zoom room or the physical room who might want to ask questions or offer comments. We have about 